So I have my PhD in counseling psychology from the University of Maryland. And when I was applying to graduate school, I was deciding between counseling psychology and clinical psychology. Um, and the main uh, training model for counseling and clinical psychologists is a PhD. It's also called the Boulder model. Um, it's a scientist practitioner model that came out of a conference in Boulder, Colorado, probably back in the early 70s. And the goal was to train psychologists who were adept at conducting research and also um, were skilled clinicians. So if you go to a PhD program, it's important that you have some interest in doing research. Oftentimes, uh, programs are looking for students who are very well matched to their faculty. So you would enter into a program with an advisor with at least a vague idea of um, the area of research that you're most interested in. The alternative to the scientist practitioner model, which is the PhD, is another doctoral program called the PsyD, P-S-Y-D. And that model was created later, um, also called the Vail model. And um, it's a practitioner model. So in other words, there are a lot of people who are interested in be becoming a psychologist, having a doctorate, but we're saying, mm, I'm really not so interested in a academic career. I don't think I'm interested in teaching or conducting research, um, but certainly of being a consumer of research and being a very skilled clinician. So this doctorate is for someone who is fairly confident they want a primarily clinical career. There are some other differences to be aware of, which is that PsyD programs often um, do not provide the same level of funding as PhD programs. Because PhD programs are associated with larger institutions, students often enter the program and they are either teaching assistants or research assistants while they're in their doctoral program, which allows the university to support their education. In other words, oftentimes you have a stipend and you don't have to pay um, for your doctoral degree. Um, with a PsyD program, oftentimes they're housed in freestanding institutions of psychology, but they can accept a larger number of students because they're not confined to this mentor model that's uh, really about research, um, but they don't fund their students. So there is that incurred debt that is associated with a PsyD. It's just important for students to be aware of. When you're applying to a PhD program, I often advise students to apply to at least about a dozen programs, apply broadly geographically, and the reason for that is even if you're an exceptional student, you've done extremely well in your GREs, you have a high GPA, you have research experience, you have at least some clinical experience, um, that it really comes down to how well you are matched with a particular program. Because when you apply, you not only apply because, let's say, you really want to go to the University of Colorado and they have a great program, but there may also be Dr. Smith or Dr. Jones there who is doing research in um, career development, and that's a particular interest of yours. So if you, and it's not to say that you have to have done that type of research, but at least be able to speak to that being an interest of yours. And you can be pretty savvy when you're applying to programs in having fairly broad research interests, but you want to be skilled in writing your essay in a way that suggests you are an excellent fit to their program and very knowledgeable about it. So they'll accept between five and eight students, sometimes less, sometimes more, and that allows them to fund those students. Whereas a PsyD program may accept 60 students because it doesn't really matter that you have a research advisor or mentor. You simply don't. They provide clinical training. You won't have a dissertation requirement, but may do a case study or something at the end of your doctoral program. Um, they tend to be less competitive, and I often say to students who, let's say, really do think a PhD is a good model for them, but they would consider a PsyD with the understanding that a PsyD program may limit them from academic positions, that PsyD may be something to also apply to, um, perhaps as a plan B, as a school that you know that you could be admitted to. Another. Plan B would be to also start by applying to master's programs because many PhD programs do require that you have a master's degree in order to be admitted. Some PhD programs um, do take students straight out of undergrad. 
and that it's not essential. But if you're really still thinking about um, career options, it's entirely possible that you could have a very successful clinical career at a master, as a master's level therapist. And there are master's level licensed counselors, often called LCPCs, licensed clinical professional counselors, or LPCs, licensed professional counselors, depending on the state. Social work is another master's level terminal degree, so LCSW, licensed clinical social worker. And so both of those programs are shorter in duration, so if that appeals to you, then you're looking at three years to complete your degree as opposed to five or six years to complete your degree in a doctoral program. Yeah. Typically, in any doctoral program, it's three years of full-time coursework. The fourth year, oftentimes, um, you're starting your dissertation research, you're taking some additional coursework and probably engaging in more externships off-site that are clinical, um, maybe doing more teaching. So by that point, you're probably teaching courses of your own at the undergraduate level. And then the fifth year, if you're right on track and very diligent in getting everything done and your dissertation is on track, then you typically go on a full year paid internship. And the application process for that is very similar to applying to graduate school. Once again, you're putting yourself out there, applying broadly geographically. For counseling psychologists, they typically go to a university counseling center and they're on staff for a year. For clinical psychologists, they either go to a university counseling center, a VA hospital, or another clinical setting. Counseling and clinical psychology are two distinct programs. I always make the point to say that once you are a psychologist out there in the world, there's very little distinction between counseling and clinical psychologists. Um, in order to practice independently, you need to be licensed, and the licensure process does not differ between counseling and clinical psychologists. But if you really look at the programs more closely, mainly there are philosophical differences. Counseling psychologists talk about um, focusing more on assets and strengths rather than psychopathology. That's not to say they're not well trained in diagnosis and assessment. Mm -hmm. They are, but it's more of a philosophical um, viewpoint. You'll want to consider prerequisites, especially as you're planning for graduate school, what classes are important to take or essential to take um, if you're interested in a doctorate or a master's degree in clinical or counseling psychology. You do not need to be a psychology major or minor even, but oftentimes when you look at the admission requirements, they would require that you have taken at least Psych 101, a behavioral statistics, a research methods class, and abnormal psychology. Sometimes it's abnormal psychology or personality. That's an important point because I think, at least at Bowdoin, a fair amount of planning goes into making sure you can take a class like abnormal psychology. But the rationale for that, of course, is that in order to know that you want to invest the time in a graduate program, it's important that you have at least some exposure, certainly to psychology, but also to mental health and mental illness. Particularly for a PhD, it would be very challenging to do that, and I think that many of the programs would support you. So in a sense, you are working at the same time. You're a teaching assistant, you're a graduate assistant. However, if you have an established career and you're looking to go back and start your education in clinical or counseling psychology, PsyD programs are particularly well suited and sometimes designed for non-traditional students who are um, going back for their education and so part-time options are readily available more so in a PsyD program or in a master's program than they are in a PhD program.